Jam! Hello again and welcome to the Mana Pool. This is episode 479 of the Mana Pool, and I got that right without having to look a fourth time. Nice. Thank you. I was proud of me. <laughs> I am Chewy, the lead dork, and with me, as always, are some other dorks. Hey, dorks. Hey, I'm a dork. I'm Brian. I'm the lead rambler. Uh, tangent master type guy around here, and uh, I'm here to talk about pirates and uh, and dinosaurs and gorgons. Oh my! I'm Mike, and I'm the rules guy and the game lore guy, and I'm here to talk about also pirates and dinosaurs, but not gorgons. And I'm Dirk, the self-proclaimed greenest man alive and moral compass of the group, Oops. and. I like dinosaurs, but you know what I like more? Codgar. <laughs> Lord Codgar. <laughs> um, sorry for that random sound effect, uh, listeners. Um, I just remembered to turn off the, the microwave. Uh, no, the the stream alerts, and I accidentally hit the test a sound button. Oh. So I did not suddenly get a don a donation. It's just I accidentally hit the button. Okay, everything's turned off now. <laughs> I was trying to do it all surreptitiously. <laughs> oh, I forgot to turn these off. Da, 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 da. And then there's a, there it was. Hmm. Oh, well. Bad at this game. So, Hascon was last weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Which means that lots of stuff happened. From, yeah, uh, I did. From at, at Hascon. There we go. And the the main thing that seems to have caused all of the people to first do this and then start drooling is the unlands. Because we all know the lands in the unsets are pretty because they have to be. Yes. Mm -hmm. We've got... Oh, yeah. un which one was first? Unglued was first. I... I I always get confused to the order. So Unglued was first, and it had those really cool full art lands that were neat at the time. And then Unhinged came out with even more prettier full art lands. Mm -hmm. And then there was Untied. And then there was and Untied. And then there was Undone. Right, right. Unzipped, unbuttoned. Yep, yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Unleashed. Uh, no, that was not an unset. That was a real set. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, or wasn't but, that a, isn't that a, a ability? Yeah, un unleashed was an ability. <laughs> but I, say, I don't think it was a set. I'm pretty sure it was an ability. <laughs> anyway, ignore and my coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. Uh. Anyway, so we had unglued and unhinged, and now we have unstable, and the uh the lands are not only full art and not only John Avon. But they're borderless. Yeah. And yeah. they are, as I tweeted, extremely sexy. Oh, yeah. Like, dang. Even Bill said, wow, when those get released as, like, you know, full art posters or whatever, they're going to be amazing. Oh, yeah. And he's not wrong. And the best part is there's no Jace wandering around in the background. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best part. <laughs> At least not that we can see without magnification. Oh, God. <laughs> Hashtag find Jace. <laughs> so, yeah, that, like I said, that made everyone uh, jump to attention and then start drooling. So I figured that'd be the first thing we talked about. Yeah. What do you guys think? You want to get like 200 a piece? Mm hmm. I mean, it'd be nice, but <laughs> get rid of my old lands. That'd be a, that'd be a lot of packs or a lot of other money yeah yeah and the theory that we've had on monday night magic is that there's literally no reason to buy unstable except to play it at the time you know just play mm -hmm. it right then yeah. yeah sort of like conspiracy but conspiracy they put a few chase cards in so that after you got done playing it you could be like well at least i got this you know tag fading or whatever mm-hmm but uh, with unsets, there's literally no reason to buy them. And they know that there's no reason to buy them outside of the novelty of playing with them once or twice. And then it sort and of wears what? off. 
Yeah. So I mean, there there are some. Uh, I know there are some people who take the cards and put them in actual decks, actual actual I, casual decks, and build decks have, out of them. I have looked at so many un un cards that I have, like Greater Morphling or um, yeah. Infernal Spawn of Infernal Spawn of Evil, and I'm like. I'm thinking about it, but I don't think I've ever actually put one into a deck. Or even something simple and silly like the announcer or something like that. <laughs> Ooh, I should totally play with Rare Be Gone. That would upset everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so because there's no, let's say there's no practical reason to buy the yeah. unsets. That way I don't make it sound in like term, completely worthless. In terms of value, financial value at least. Or constructed or sanction yeah. constructed play. You're right. That's that's more what I meant was the constructed play. So they put in in what apparently was a brilliant marketing scheme. They started with unglued and put in the full art lands and made everybody lose their mind. And like unlands originally were going for you know two and three bucks a piece for a basic land. Mm -hmm. Like I, I've spoken to many of people who used to throw them in as like gravy for trades. You know if the trade was a little off. They'd like mm. throw in a couple of unlands and okay, we're good. <laughs> and it's really, it's really brilliant. They put something as simple as basic lands into this set that is otherwise, as far as normal, you know, magic players are concerned, worthless. Mm -hmm. And suddenly people want to buy packs. It's amazing. Cause there's going to be one in every land in every pack, of course. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. Apparently the steam flogger boss uh, is going to be at land rarity. Oh, yeah, they put him on the land sheet. He's the yeah. only card in the set that's going to have a black frame. A black border, I mean. Yeah. Because riggers and constructs are in the set, so they had to put Steam Flugger Boss in. Like, duh. <laughs> but there you go. They're very pretty. If you haven't seen them, they're, the link is in the uh, show notes. You should totally check them out because, oh my god, so sexy. Uh, so the other big news from Hascon was the blind pre-release for Iconic Masters. Yeah, I'm telling you, if I could have gone, I would have gone for that reason alone. Just oh, yeah. Because Same here. Blind, blind pre-release. Yeah, it's been so long since we had a blind pre-release. Like, we never really had a blind pre-release, but... At least like a half-blind pre-release or something. Where yeah. you didn't know every card. So you used to, for those that haven't been playing all that long, that actually used to be a thing. There was a time when not every card was released before the uh, pre-release. Not every card was was made public. So you yeah, would go the there. only way to know was to like uh, go look on the internet Friday night to see a list that someone had posted after opening a bunch of um, boxes slightly before they should have. Right. And, and sometimes post. those weren't accurate or didn't still didn't list. Yeah, sometimes anything. they were off and sometimes they were still missing a couple of uh, yeah. couple cards. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting because you, for, for people that want to prepare for the pre-release, which I get, but I always look at it as, you know, it's a tournament for fun, but for people that, want to be prepared it, it, it's frustrating because you want to know what's in the set but for people like me who are in more for the uniqueness of the experience um i i got a thrill out of discovering things there as part of the discovery process so but yeah. then um so on monday i guess because the cat was out of the bag instead of spoiling a couple cards they literally put up the entire card image gallery for Iconic Masters. Yeah, a set that doesn't come out until November. Yeah, and we many like... The full set. Yeah, many like myself, I think, were a bit overwhelmed. But um, it is here for perusal, and there's some interesting stuff here. So we're still in the middle of Ixalan previews, and even though... I gotta say, in reviewing cards that came out since last week, if you thought that everything interesting was covered by either the original leaked article or um, in the first round of spoilers, they saved a lot of interesting stuff. So I want to get into that. But there is some interesting stuff in here, too. So I thought we might just hit some of the highlights. And then, you know, 
probably come back to this much, much later when this is actually going to come out. Like, oh, by the way, yeah, this is still in there, too. Yeah, so, so, hey, Mike. Yes. Remind people, since you're the one who remembers, uh, apparently, because I had already forgotten until you mentioned it during the odds and ends. By the way, dear listeners, in case you didn't catch it last week, odds and ends for Monday Night Magic and the Mana Pool will be going up for patrons within a week of the show going up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I'll be working on the backlog uh, in the meantime. But if you want to hear stuff that we were talking about uh, before and after this episode, then just wait a few days and it'll be up on Patreon for the uh, $10 tier. Huh? Anyway, um, since you're the one who remembers the most, I think, because, uh, like I said, I'd forgotten about it until the odds and ends, would you tell us what the hell Iconic Masters is? Because it's not what we originally thought. Yeah, it's not Iconic as in... Um, you know, conventional conversational meaning of the word iconic, uh, you know, uh, noteworthy, amazing, popular, influential cards from all across Magic's history. Yeah, that's the next master set that I already forgot the name of. 25? Is it just called Masters 25 or something like that? Something, something like, that, like that, yeah. Anyway. But yeah, so they're using iconic here in the sense of the Magic like internal design term for iconic for like, like the iconic creature types in each color for white, it's angels for blue. Um, it's eventually come to be sphinxes gone back and forth a lot over the years for black. It's uh, it used to be vampires, but now it's demons. Is it demons in here? Yes. It's demons. Now the vampires are smaller and regular sized. Demons took over as the big iconics. In red, it's dragons, and in green, it's hydras. So it's these uh, big, fat, flashy creatures, usually with flying, um, except in the case of hydras, because that's silly. Uh, in each color, God, so a iconic masters. Hydra? That sounds like nightmare fuel. Yeah, iconic masters is meant to feature uh, those creature types and a bunch of other big, fat, flashy creatures and effects from the game's history. That's what Iconic Masters is supposed to do. There yeah. are only two Sphinxes in blue. Really? Consecrated and uh, Sphinx of Uthun. Mm, you're correct. Uthun. I mean, there's also only two um, Hydras in green, I think. Hmm. I want... But these but these are still fairly at least touching upon them. Yeah, but like uh, each color also has its Praetor from New Phyrexia. Each color has its spirit dragon from Champions of Kamigawa. With mm -hmm. amazing new art. Really cool new art. Mm -hmm. And each color also has some other uh, really impressive stuff sprinkled in there. Like I see Teferi and Blue. Yeah. Uh, and a couple of other things. Yeah, Avison in red. Well, she's an angel, so she fits in right there. Wow. So I just, I, I did a control F for the word star mm -hmm. and looked at the art of all of these dragons. Wow, I had not actually looked closely at any of them but Kakusho because he was always my favorite. But mm -hmm. all of these new dragon arts are just sick. Brian, yeah, you we were go. correct. Yeah, I'm telling you. I, my favorites are probably uh, the blue one. Is it Kaiga? Uh, Kaiga. Ka Kaiga. And actually the green one, who unfortunately doesn't see as much play as the others because... Uh, but he looks great. <laughs> Jugen? I that, really like, I, I like them all. Like, I mean, they're Ryusei all looks like such a badass. Ryusei yeah. looks really impressive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, outside of that cycle, but still talking about dragons, the blade wing, the risen art. Yes. Oh, 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 <laughs> hang on. Oh, dude, look at that. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that is cool. They definitely think... have did themselves. Go ahead. Yeah. I think maybe I prefer the original a little bit more because it's more obvious that it looks like um, an the undead red blade wing card. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, the the head on this one is shaped a little funny, but it's still a really cool art. I definitely see the point. I think I like the art on this one, but it doesn't evoke Rorik's blade wing mm -hmm. aside from the name. So, <clears throat> but yeah, so there's some there's a lot of interesting little tidbits here, and there are some definite like go for this type cards like kiki jiki in red yeah uh, a lot of the mythics are mythics that you're just gonna want to have um i like channel 
too. I hear channels pretty good. Yeah, green. Right. Oh yeah, the original. For those Walk that don't know, the 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 website Channel Fireball came from the ability to cast the spell channel and mm. then funnel all of your life into a fireball. This is also what was known as cheese. Yes. <laughs> You could cheese your opponent out with Channel Fireball, and uh, I've I learned to uh, yesterday or last week I learned at some point that cheese as a term for gaming is all over gaming history. I I did not know this, but um, <laughs> in StarCraft I, I watched the first of uh, Day Nine's you know how to play or learn StarCraft or whatever it's called series mm -hmm. where he showed an old like finals of a massive uh, a huge tournament and game one was won because dude sent in a probe to did this and did that and cheesed it and won uh, and I'm like yeah. wait a minute <laughs> he cheesed it hang hang yeah. on <laughs> is it war and I was like that's just like channel fireball where you cheesed it and you won <laughs> yeah huh hey, hey dark probe rush coming mm -hmm. at you <clears throat> oh man like so he sent he sent one probe just as a brief aside he sent one probe all the way across the map and built uh i guess it's is it a gateway the thing that's he built a pi he built a pylon probably and then he probably set up some cannons no My, no none no, of that just, he built what is it is it i haven't played starcraft yet although i will because i've got starcraft remastered now but it's i think he called it a gateway where oh to to send in zealots yeah. yeah and he built he he made one to build and then made another one just to block his opponent from blowing up the original yeah and then he just sent in zealots to murder his base while he was trying desperately to maintain and he just yeah. won and i'm like that's messed up and it's just like channel <laughs> fireball cuz when you see it happen you're like that's messed up yeah that's the sort of early game shenanigans that makes one player feel like they were never really in it. But exactly, when you're competitive yeah. at that level, you know. So, um, I'm coming back to this. I only see there's a sprinkle of lots of different mechanics. So you're rewarded from knowing for knowing pretty well how a lot of these things do. Like I, I see a couple of suspend in blue. I see uh, ancestral vision, and but that's the only one of that cycle that I see. It's really see the sick new art there awesome. too. Like that's so, really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of those chase cards made me wonder. Um, and I also I saw people other I saw some other people thinking out loud about this on other places on the internet. If iconic masters and masters twenty five were originally the same thing and it was supposed to be something more like um masters 25 but for some reason they got split when they realized i don't know the the idea seemed pretty half-baked but the presence of some of the chase the presence of some cards that i think would be iconic magic history wise and the presence of some other chase cards made me wonder yeah. like i see spirit monger spirit monger is a isn't historically iconic card yes you know otherwise it's just a beast being in this set it's a big beast i mean it is a big fat flashy creature which is what the set is supposed to do um glimpse the unthinkable is a is a chase card to me i think um but it's also a big fat splashy card something like mishra's bauble seems just more like a chase card and that really only became iconic in the last year year or two yeah 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 there's, well, some interesting, uh, I, there's some interesting... Sorry, go ahead, Dirk. I was just saying that, yeah, with we, we talked about the dragons, we've talked about the praetors, there's at least one legendary creature in each one of the colors, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure that's a big, splashy effect and everything, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, but then also something like Mana Drain pops out. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah, what the heck? What, what set was this supposed to be in? <laughs> <laughs> There's also some interesting downgrades here, whereas, you know, Mana Drain is up a couple rarities from what, Uncommon to Mythic? Something like that. You know, but they want it to be Chase. Uh, Abyssal Persecutor is down from Mythic to Rare. Mm -hmm. Assault, <laughs> Assault Formation is down to Uncommon. Hoarding Dragon is down to Uncommon. 
What's um, assault formation? It's a Everyone. green enchantment. Oh, green enchantment. There it is. Oh, right. And it was a rare in cons, I believe. Mm-hmm. Or well, drag, dragons of Tarkir, probably. I mean, probably I think not. some of these yeah, rarity dragons. shifts are because this is all, it's meant to be drafted itself. Of course. Right. I just, but, you know, it's, I just think those are some interesting um, adjustments. Hmm. Well, look, Oblivion Only, Stone. Yeah, yeah, with new art. I kind of prefer the original because I felt like the original one, the, the orb felt bigger. And here it's obviously yeah. pocket size. I'm like, it's, yeah, the original is more dramatic. You're going to blow up the world with that? I mean, I know you're holding a thermal detonator, but, you know, 50,000 no less. I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm a dork. Um, oh, hey, they've got Festering Newt, Bog Brew Witch, and Bubbling Cauldron all in here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I miss that. That's, that's cool. cute. I like that. Um, but some other stuff in here, stuff that, you know, I've always really appreciated, like Rift Bolt. People look at that and go, oh, well, since they brought Lightning Bolt back once or twice, it doesn't look as good. But Rift Bolt's still an awesome card. <laughs> Rift Bolt rules. So, yeah, Rift Bolt's pretty sick. Yeah. Wow, Stagger it's, Shock is in here, too. Everybody gets delayed direct damage. Yeah. Is Primeval Titan, like, is that tournament legal in somewhere? It oh, is yeah. tournament legal everywhere except Commander. Yeah, it's it's pretty okay. huge in uh, Modern right now. Mm-hmm. But but no, it is not legal in Commander, which might be what you think. Okay, that's yeah. It was yeah. banned in Commander. It's the only Titan in here, right? It is. It is the only one. Yeah, and as far as other incomplete cycles, we've got the Austere Command and Cryptic Command, mm-hmm. but no yep. others. But no others. Black gets Necropotence. Yeah, that's pretty big. Yep. And Night of Souls Betrayal. You remember when Night of Souls Betrayal was a big thing? Dude, yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm. Once Affinity went away, it was actually... I, my first time I was re- reading, and I'm like, why is this legendary? And then later I I was like, oh... Oh, that's why. Yeah. That's <laughs> why. So, yeah. And I mentioned uh, before, well, I don't think on the show, Lotus Cobra and Lotus Cobra at Rare. And Lotus Cobra was... The fir- one of the first mythics to make people really question what was the mythic rarity actually going to be because people saw it as a chase mythic and it's a mm-hmm. and it was a utility creature which people were like well wait a minute this is a small utility creature it's not an iconic you know part of the story is this really just mythic to try and sell packs and that's a discussion for another day but the point is that this was definitely at the time that it came out, a huge card. And then two months later, nobody was afraid of it because players were doing other things. But it was always kind of frightening what sort of stuff Lotus Cobra could do. And yeah. yet, really, if you think about it, I mean, it's been modern legal for forever, and no one has even thought twice about banning it. Am I right? So it's one of those things where it's the boogeyman that never really materialized. So to see it here, I'm kind of like, oh, yeah. And to remember, you really can do some crazy stuff with Lotus Cobra. So I'm actually kind of happy to see it here. Like, hey, little guy. So one quick thing that I observed, go back to Blade Wing the Risen. Yeah. What is his uh, his rarity? He's uncommon. uncommon. What? Uncommon. <laughs> uncommon. Yeah. Wow. I was going to get to that. And Blood Baron of Viscopa is a rare Oh, it nice. was definitely a mythic first time. Yeah. You'll so. notice because limited is a thing, Thunderma Hellkite is still mythic. It's, yeah, because <laughs> it may not be the Ooh. most iconic of dragons, but yeah. Pretty stupidly overpowered. <laughs> it will cause you to lose. Do yeah. we we don't have Baneslayer Angel here, so Mm-mm. Yeah, that'll probably be in twenty five. <laughs> Dang it. Yeah. But we do have Avicen and the Archangel of Thune at Mythic in white, so Oh, hey, and Simic Sky Swallower's rare. We were right. <laughs> hey, look at Dirk. that. I'm sorry, Dirk was right. <laughs> in this set, with with limited in mind, yes, Dirk was right. <laughs> Dude, Glimpse the Unthinkable's in here. Has that been reprinted ever? I, I don't think it has. I Maybe in a has. Commander product? Glimpse. Check that out. Wait, was it in? No, it's only been in Ravnica. Okay. Wow. Dude, that's cool. Yeah. When was Illusory Ambusher first printed? Because all of the, every single one of these cards is a reprint, and um, I don't remember ever seeing it before. It's like from a Commander set or something? 
Illusory Maybe Ambusher is from Commander 2015. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. I like it. It's kind of cool. Does it have it the is. same? I'm sure we covered Ghost it Kitty when it art. came out, but art looks familiar. Yeah, that's the same art. Okay. I just didn't really remember it, so I was like, so oh, and also the uh, in the mana base. Are all yes. of the uh, the bounce lands here? All of the bounce lands are here from original Oops. Ravnica. The yeah, the Karoo lands that were not actually the Karoo lands, but the Ravnica Karoo. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, just making sure because if they printed like <laughs> six of them, then what? Uh, but also the eleven. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> also the the future site lands yeah the here. crazy future site lands were but they uh, don't... reprinted with their the proper you know magic border the, yeah so i kind of like the future site border a little better but i'm okay with these um yeah, these are the ones where th- they were a cycle in that they were all completely different and they were all printed at rare in future site and all of the allied color combinations were represented yeah. But other than that, they have nothing to do with each other whatsoever. Yeah, so Graven because... Cairns originally be- uh, was printed in Future Sight, and it became a 10-card cycle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's... I, is that the only one? That's... Yep, that's it. Yeah, All the other cycles haven't been filled out. Right. Grove of the Burn Willows ended up uh, causing trouble in Modern. <laughs> Horizon Canopy. Look at the new art on Horizon Canopy. Ooh! Yeah. yeah. Really. That is... Pr- Noah Bradley. Well, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> um, Nimbus Maze, which sounds really cool, but never actually did anything. And then River of Tears, which sounds even cooler and never actually did much. Yeah, it sort of did stuff for a short period of time, but that was about it. Yeah, I yeah. think Nimbus Maze all... might have been where they got the idea for some of the uh, inter... Well, maybe not got the idea, but it's some design space for the, the Buddy Lands, or not the Buddy Lands. The Buddy Lands? The... Um... <laughs> The check lands? Which one? Is, the ones where... Because uh, Nimbus Maze the, says tap for colorless. Tap to duels. add... Maybe. Tap to add white, but only if you control an island. And tap to add blue, but only if you control the planes. But the ones that say, mm-hmm. hey, this shows up untapped if you control a whatever or a whatever. Oh, yeah. Those are the buddy lands. The buddy lands, yeah. It just feels like that similar design space where they're like, you know, that didn't work. But what if we did this instead? But I mean, all of these are decent lands. So none of these are, you're not going to get one and go all, I mean, you might, but they're all interesting land. So, Hmm. yeah. So without going through the whole thing, uh, there's a lot of really interesting stuff here. There's some very interesting new art. I think the art on mannequin is actually somewhat creepy. Um, (laughs) but you know, there's, there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Uh, and I would have loved to have been in that pre-release. I'm I'm sure players will now pour this over and try and figure out, okay, what's the ideal yeah. color combinations and themes and all that. But just as a whole, I think this looks really sweet, and I'm I'm glad they did this. So I mean, it looks like fun, yeah, just uh-huh. from what's in it. But I don't understand the point. I I'm not seeing enough of the iconic creature types for it to be called iconic masters in that way, and I'm not seeing enough of the iconic cards for Magic's history for it to be called Iconic Masters in that way. Like, I just don't get yeah, it. Yeah, I, I I wish they... I think they could just basically call it, here's a set of awesome stuff. Yeah, like, awesome cards 2017, and we'd be like, word? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, hey Mike, ex- uh-huh. Fog Bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's there. <laughs> <sighs> One of our... For those of you who aren't familiar with the story, one time, um, <laughs> one time I forgot the full text of what Fogbank actually says. It says, "Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by Fogbank." Usually, that last part, you know, it's indistinguishable from just a blank space on the card since it has zero power. But there was a game where I jumped through. So many hoops, so, so many, so many, many hoops to steal multiple objects from other players and give a fog bank 20 power <laughs> and attack someone. You attack, and me. they said it was Brian, yeah, yeah, oh, it was Brian. And he said, Okay, <laughs> and I said, You're dead. And he said, 
No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> How did you make it a tag? This was back when the wall creature type he, he, had the rider, found right? Some way. He found some way. Because to... I think Devin, like, I was playing the deck that just steals stuff from other people. And I think Devin, either Devin or Brian, was doing something weird. Oh, no. Devin was playing his deck that could change creatures' types for some effect. Oh. That was also the period of time when. The yeah. defender ability didn't exist. It was just the fact that it was a wall that would keep it from attacking. Yeah. So I changed it into not a wall. He changed it into like a goblin or anything but a wall. Yeah. And it has flying. So yes. And he pumped it. He, he burned through. And we're not talking about like tapping things that he could use. He burned through spells that he was not getting back. <laughs> and then attacked me. And I was like, uh. So Brian's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad. I felt, and you were so upset with yourself. We laugh about it now, but you were so upset with yourself. Oh yeah, dude, oh, you were man. not happy. <laughs> I was not. So now you. Have I will not lie about that. I was a very unhappy person. <laughs> but I don't see anything in this set to give something remove defender. So tell you what, draft away because you will not make that mistake again. Oh god. <laughs> so anything else from this or we, we've got other cards that are about to enter standard with dinosaurs and whatnot so yeah um, um I, I do I, think, I think that the thumbnail for this episode is going to involve the art for enlarge in green the art for diminish in blue and probably the art for uh illusory ambush or if i can find it because kitties seems yeah. fair because they're all kitties. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I love the. I tried uh, to meow and I choked. <laughs> I love the flavor text on enlarge because you know the picture is a giant cat suddenly sticking its head in the water and attacking a uh, a merfolk civilization. The flavor text on enlarge enlarge says for mittens it was just another day at the beach. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! Was that there before? No. Enlarge. <laughs> Who let Mark nope. Rosewater into the flavor text room? It was not because it had the giant um, wall of flavor te- of re- reminder text about trample. Oh, for trample. Because uh, it was from M14. Well, and how often do you see a kitten named Mittens in, like, in, in, in Earth, on, magic? In <laughs> magic. Yeah. That, usually that same kitten would be named, like, with Oon or, or, you know, something <laughs> something magic, but mittens, so. Oh, he's a good kitty. <laughs> so. Yeah. But again, I could sit here all day and point out awesome cards. Yeah, which we, we, awesome cards. we might end up coming back to this. I think we should. In November when the set comes out. I think mm-hmm. we should. And we're, of course, going to mention everything we just talked about, but, you know. But it'll cool. be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's go on to Ixalan then. Yep. So... As a reminder to everyone, we are recording this on Thursday the 14th. Tomorrow, the full card image gallery will be released. Yep. So if you're but wondering I've... why we didn't get to something, it's because A, it wasn't here yet, or B, we don't have all day. <laughs> but I also think that this time, maybe more so than previous times, because they have spread out more comments and uncommons through um, previews due to the spoiler leak, I don't think that tomorrow will feel as... Like, wow, look at all this crap. Voluminous as it yeah. usually does. So, but that is not to say, I, once again, there's some interesting stuff here. Should we go ahead and start right away with the uh, the next Planeswalker to be revealed? I feel like if we don't go ahead and get it out of the way, it's Oh, yeah, the bad. one who's totally in the set, just like the uh, promotional materials made it out to be. Yes. Because th- wasn't they didn't this revealed on, like, us. the next day after we recorded? It was either Friday um, or Monday. I think it was over Something the weekend. Like it was over the weekend because it was in the spoiler. I didn't see it, and then it was in the spoiler on Monday. Yeah, maybe they like, revealed it at Hascon or something. But yeah, yeah we were like, surely Vrask is going to be in this, right? And I was like, it's she's been all over the promo material. She's got to be. And I'm like, I don't know. Surely they wouldn't do. No, they wouldn't do that. They didn't. And they didn't. Thank God. It's, it's cool. So, she's right there. <laughs> so, Dirk, have you seen Vraska yet? This is pretty <laughs> No, awesome. I haven't. Okay. Well, uh, this time I'll take the title. Vraska, Relic Seeker. And she costs four and a black and a green, which fits perfectly with how she's been represented before. This is only her second incarnation, by the way. Uh, and she comes in with six loyalty for six mana. So that's that's her. What's her first ability, somebody? 
Plus two, create a two two black pirate creature token with menace. Yar. Plus two. That's pretty good. That is she, really good. That's really good. She protects herself, goes up to eight, eight, and that that two two has menace. So if the board is clogging up, mm, okay. Hey Mike, what's that third second ability with all those words on it? Okay. Uh, first of all, I lied during my intro. I am going to talk about Gorgons. Uh, <laughs> so the second ability is minus three. Destroy target artifact, creature, or enchantment. Create a colorless treasure artifact token with tap. Sack this. Get one mana of any color. Seems good. So you just pick something and just and blow it up. Mm-hmm. And because it's we're in trigger. black, and because we're in black and green, it you know we have. Artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, which, especially with enchantments, I feel like that this is a very, this may be the only thing in your deck that could answer something like that. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you then get a treasure, it's like when you kill the rat and you're like, hey, this rat had 72 gold on it. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> apparently swallowed 72 gold pieces. <laughs> yeah. But hey, you know what? You'll take it. Yeah. Like the old uh, Penny Arcade with the, why the, was the, this beetle carrying a, a diamond ring? Yeah, and it's at the it's at the store picking out an engagement ring. And yeah. So, hey, Dirk. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. So her original incarnation was plus one. Whenever something dealt combat damage to her, that thing died. Right. She, you know, they got close enough for her to, to look at her after they stabbed her, and she turned them to stone. Minus three, yeah. destroy target non-land permanent. So she just looked at something, and it died. And now this one, she looks at something and turns it to treasure? (laughs) She looks at something and goes through his pockets. (laughs) She pulls a a, a, uh, sixth element and she's like, hey, the stones are in you. Ew. I just think that she turns them to stone and then sells them to someone. It's like, it'll be lawn art. (laughs) Can Uh, I have some money for this? Like in uh, Percy Jackson. Right. How did you get this to look so lifelike? Oh, um, <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> Why what? is its face all freaky and screaming? Eh, that's my heart. Yeah. And then what was the limit <laughs> break on the original one? Was that the one with the rogue assassins? Yeah, the three, the three assassins three that assassins. whenever they dealt combat damage to a player, that player lost the game. Which always felt super awesome. But it is awesome. It's just not practical. Yeah. So, hey, Dirk. What's the limit break on this thing? <laughs> so for minus 10 loyalty, target player's life total becomes one. Buh. Just, just. One. Just, just. I, I, and, okay, so. Brian is completely right with all of that, by the way. <laughs> I mean, you know. Just. <laughs> like. Just, wow. The fact that you don't have to invest any mana. I mean, you invest the original six mana, but you're not going to be able to pop this on the first turn anyway, minus doubling season. So <laughs> so the turn that you pop this, you're going to have mana. So I'm thinking, you know, gee, use this ability, lightning bolt. Use this ability, uh, any number of black spells that steal life from a, a, a player. Uh-huh. You use this ability and then attack with your number one of, of your two two pirates plus plus more one more. You know, uh, I uh, uh, I you know what I really like about this? I don't mind control decks. I'm glad that control decks exist uh, in the game because it's good for the game. But it's very frustrating to play against control decks. I love how anti control this card is because it generates threats while pumping its own loyalty. So it's hard for control decks to one for one them uh, and keep up. You have the ability to just unconditionally remove their win condition as long as it can be targeted. And then as long as they can't remove this, they can gain a million life and it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So I can, it's, I think, I feel like this is a very versatile card. I can also see control decks using this card because if they have the ability to protect it, it's also it can also be their win condition, but I feel like this is a good way of dealing with control decks 
for the right deck. Of course, the question is, what deck does this go into? And who knows? It's it's a bit heavy on the curve. It's way too heavy for something that's very, very low, like run a, run a ramp red or something like that. They're not paying it, playing anything that costs six. Um, I just, I love what this card represents. I'm just glad that they l- use the set target player's life total to whatever on a limit break and not on a middle ability like original Soren. <laughs> yeah. Soren. <laughs> He's well, like, Soren oh, could also. I just played him and now your life total's 10. So, nah. Like, what? <laughs> well, Soren could also target you as well, right? So, you couldn't could he? also do some of the. Couldn't you? Yeah. Here, have some blood. Yeah. Yeah. If you're at three. I think he can. Going from three to five, three three to ten is pretty important. So, oh, already got it, Mike. It is target, target opponent. opponent. Yeah, I didn't okay. think. Oh, okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. My mistake. Look so, at you. But again, there's a pretty significant difference between ten and one as well. So, dude, you can use Vraska to set your life total to one, so you can flip our ghouls blood fast. <laughs> yes. Then, Quickly uh, sack something so you don't die. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that, by the way. Unless you're totally gonna win right now. Don't don't do Dude, that. is Vraska a combo with Death Shadow? <laughs> uh, <sighs> so Bad Brian. Awesome. Awesome. Hey, hey, awesome sauce. So all right, we've already so we've seen what almost certainly are the only three planeswalkers from the set. I'd be shocked if there was a fourth one. But yeah, it's so we've Jace. got romance novel okay. cover Jace, who's um, interesting because of the design space that he opens up and the fact that he actually cares about illusions. Oh yeah, so like, he's good. He's just romance yeah. novel Jace. That's what he is now. Right. Uh, we've got Watley, who is really cool, really cool, and you know cares about dinos a little bit, but. Only in that she makes them for free, uh, and she's one of those unique planeswalkers where she doesn't really have a limit break. She kind of does, but um, she, yeah. you're just gonna keep pumping her up. She doesn't have a other minus, so you can just keep getting more and more value out of her. Yeah. And then there's Vraska, guys. There's no bad planeswalkers. Who's a crazy are, pirate Gorgon? They're all kind of cool. I mean, you. I mean, Yar. You know, there's no. Uh, there's no Tibbles. No one can replace Tibble. Thank goodness. No. <laughs> now, if you read the story this week, we actually did get to see a sneak preview a little bit. Didn't actually see the card or anything, but the story did involve um, uh, the guy with the face and the thing. Oh um, yeah, face guy. In Angrith, and there is uh, there's some flavor text we read before that uh, it's actually on Angrith's Marauders, and um, the flavor text says Captain Angrith cares less about treasure than mayhem. If he can't leave Ixalan, he'll burn the plane down. And we were like, oh, that sounds cool. Um, and we actually got to see a, a bit of a look into his character into the story on Wednesday, and he's a minotaur. So I'm just about positive he'll be in the next set, and that'll be really cool to see, too. And see, I've actually figured out which Planeswalker will be worse than Tybalt. <laughs> What's the name of the, t- of the Planeswalker who has the five cards that where he always seems to be getting into trouble? Oh, oh tra- Travis. 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 Travis, yeah. Travis the Cursed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he is a Planeswalker, I imagine, would just be like... His plus one ability will just be something you just go, eh. His middle ability will be like, eh. And his limit break will just be like, uh, like, everyone shuffle your library and your graveyard in your hand and start all over again. <laughs> your life goes back to 20. And everyone just goes, uh. But it needs to be cursed somehow. So, well, yeah, uh, because with that limit to break, the game would make me curse. Yeah, with that limit break, everyone <laughs> kills him as soon as he hits the board. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, so here I'm, I'm giving these guys a link to the story. You don't have to read the story now. In fact, you shouldn't. But you should go about halfway down the page, and you're going to see a Minotaur with like Ghost Rider chains, and that's him. Well, that's always good. 
Oh, hey, buddy. He's cool looking. Yeah. So, he totally has a Ghost Rider chain, too. What the hell? That In, in the story, that's what he does. So, <laughs> Yeah, with how crazy and mean he is, I wonder if he's um from Theros and some kind of Mogus devotee. He definitely could be. So, Freaking Mogus. He's definitely going to be red. The only other question is, is he going to be mono red or red something else? And so we, since we've just had Huadi, it's probably not going to be red white. He's pissed off, but he's not completely unthinking, so definitely give the story a read. Nice. Now, so... so we've talked about so, three of the other uh, legendary enchantments, and they've added a fourth. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Legion's Landing is the white one. Yeah, it is. For a single white, which is... This is actually really cool. For a single white, it's a legendary enchantment that's rare. When Legion's Landing enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 white vampire creature token with lifelink. You know, the vampires in this set. So, one mana 1-1 with lifelink seems good, and that's what it does. But when you attack with three or more creatures, you transform Legion's Landing. And it transforms into Adanto, the first fort. Get it? Because one, so one shows up and that's the landing, and then when they amass enough... People, they set up a fort. Nice mm-hmm. and flavorful, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it taps for white, just like all of these others that tap for the proper color. But then for two and a white and tap, you can create another vampire with lifelink. Yeah. That's really what neat. Is, what is the land from Alliance? Um, Alliance uh, Kildor and Outpost. Yes. Yeah, Kildor and Outpost. That costs, what, one and a white? Make it one and a white, but you also have to sacrifice a planes when it enters the battlefield. Oh, yeah. yeah. Whereas this is two and a white, and the creature has lifelink, which is fantastic when you're just creating chump blockers, because oh, yeah. it, it's getting you a little bit of life at a time. And of course, if you are then outpacing your opponent and just flooding the board, that's putting you even further ahead as well. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, dude, I really dig uh, the lands, uh, the land side of all of these double face yeah. cards. Like these are all yeah. so cool. The next one that we haven't covered yet, uh, you notice the red one isn't in here. And I'm sure, I mean, they're not going to do four colors and not have the last one. That was shown today, wasn't it? In one of the other. Was was it? it? Yeah, it was shown in in some other source. Uh, I think it's in the, uh, there's a link to it in the daily update. Do, do, do. Well, I can't find the daily update from any of these links that we have. I I found I found the daily update, but I don't see. Oh come on! I saw it somewhere. Dang it! Maybe you saw Mike it on Twitter or something. Unofficial. Story. I saw it on Facebook. Oh well, there's your problem. Well, in any case, um, there is another double face card here that um, we did not have. Oh, okay, looks like it's on. It, it was one of the ones that was previewed. It says coming up later. It's on the mana source. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, here it is. Uh, so I have not because the set's going to be revealed tomorrow, d- there are no unofficial spoilers anymore. So I found it on Magic Spoiler. It's Vance's Blasting Cannons. Okay. There you I, don't, go. I don't know this one. What's it do? Oh, well, here you go, Mike. Since you wanted to uh, tell us about it, tell us about it. All right. So Vance's Blasting Cannons. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. Or the other half. Whatever. Uh, your uh your your roboting, I'm guessing because you opened Magic Spoiler. Yeah, because I opened a page and a bunch of stupid ads loaded. Okay. How do you how do you flip this? <laughs> you don't. That's the joke. Um why is this site <laughs> stupid? I guess I guess you find oh, it. Oh, oh, it's the next card. Oh, it's the next card. Right where it says next spoiler? Yeah. Okay, got it. Okay. So Vance's go. Vance's blasting cannons costs three and a red, red legendary enchantment rare. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library. If it's a non land card, you may cast that card this turn. Ooh. So it's got the red temporary draw. And that's every so, upkeep? At the beginning of your upkeep, yes. Yeah, okay. Whenever you cast your third spell in a turn, you may transform Vance's blasting cannons. Cool. Okay. So, <gasps> if my sound quality is decent, it transforms into Spitfire Bastion. 
a legendary land, it can tap for a red. Or two and a red and tap, Spitfire Bastion deals three damage to target creature or player. Damn! Duh. Duh. Completely repeatable, nuts. Repeatable f- lightning bolt for two and a red? That is awesome. I like both sides of this. Like, I mean, the white one yeah. power is pretty cool for a turn one play, but after that, the, like, after it creates the original token, it doesn't do anything. So if you don't ever flip it, you're just like, ugh. But the red one, if you never flip it, you're like, okay, I still get a, a free extra card every turn. Not a free spell, because you still got to pay for it. But basically, it's a little red conditional howling line. And then if you flip it, it's just a win condition. Yeah. So Bill pointed something out oh. that now that we've seen all four of or all five of them, it's really neat. Um, the ones that have a reason for you to not want to flip them say you may transform them. The ones that don't just say transform them. So Legion's Landing and the Growing Rights of Itlamok don't say may. They just say flip it and shut up. Just because you're done. Yeah, yeah. because they don't do anything when they're on the board other than sit there and take up space. But right. they search yeah, for Ascanta and Argyle's Bloodfast and crap, what's this called? Vance's Blasting Cannons all say you may transform because they all do something otherwise. Yeah. And I'm wondering. Ooh. If that's on purpose, like I know that these two, these three being may is on purpose. I'm just wondering why the other two are also not may because they really don't do anything else on that side. So I think it's more just to help you out. Yeah. I guess also to reduce, um, the occurrence of feel bads. I don't know. Yeah. That's sort of what I was thinking is because there's no reason to not flip it. They want to encourage you to, to transform it. Well, and if you look at both of them, especially the growing rights, there's a lot of words on there in tiny print already. So even <laughs> two more, you may, maybe they're like, you know, I, they, <laughs> they make the card explodes. <laughs> so, all right. Well, there is another one here. I started to allude to this before, but we found the red one. Uh, dowsing dagger for two is an artifact equipment. It's rare. All of these seem to be rare. That's cool. Uh, it has a quick cost of two. And when it enters the battlefield, target opponent creates two zero two green plant creature tokens with defender. Equip creature gets plus two plus one. So you have to hack through the plants because whenever equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, you may transform dowsing dagger. So I like it. You know, you're like, hey, you know, this jungle holds many secrets. And you flip it over, and it turns into Lost Veil. And Lost Veil is not legendary. And Lost Veil says, tap. Add three mana of any one color to your mana pool. It's a callback to Lotus Veil. And yep. just Black Lotus, Gilded Lotus. But especially Lotus Veil, because Lotus Veil was the land that did this, right? Yeah. Except yes. that you had to sack three untapped lands? Yep. Two, I think. Two? Was it okay. two? Okay. Well, because it was itself, I guess. Yeah. yeah. But the lands had to be untapped, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's... So you were only going up one. Yeah. Now this, I mean, you definitely have to jump through some hoops because it's not automatic. You've got to play this. You're giving the opponent creatures that stand in the way, and you still got to hit them. But if you have anything with evasion and you play this and you can go ahead and equip it and just go ahead and grant it, no, I mean, this isn't going to be tapped. Even if the creature's tapped, this is one of those times where it matters. Yeah. Creatures, uh, equipment on creatures, and enchantments on creatures don't tap when the creature taps. Everybody does it. You've got you've got stuff on a creature, you tap everything, because that's what you're used to doing. Yeah, sometimes it's just easier to turn the whole pile sideways. Right. But technically, only the creature taps. So when this transforms... Unless it's had to tap for some other reason, boom, three mana. Well, I was just thinking nice. these a really quick way of doing this would be to put it on a pinger. It's gonna be it's combat, combat damage. damage. Oh. But on yeah, a flyer because that would be too easy. <laughs> on a flyer or um I mean even a guy with menace, now they've got automatically got two uh plants, but you're you are making it you are cutting into them much faster so even if they do block you know you're 
your creature has unholy strength, and if the creature dies, just throw it on another creature and keep going. Yeah. And it, it also says you may. If you really, if it's late game and you don't need mana and you just want an unholy strength for whatever creature, you are not obligated to flip it over. Yeah. I do like the, uh, like, this is the machete that you have to hack through the plants with. That's yep. that's a nice thing I hadn't thought of, uh, Brian. Nicely done. Yeah, dude. I didn't. All of these uh, double face cards are just cool. I don't yeah. I don't know if how, how good or any any of them are, how effective they'll be in standard or any of that. And I don't care. They're all awesome. They're so They're neat. All awesome. They're so well done. Yeah, the, the mechanic for this it feels really neat. Yeah. I love how it, it ties into the theme of exploration and discovery, you know? Yeah. Nice. Uh so real quick, because I spotted that while we were talking about Vraska. Uh-huh. Did you guys see the Sky Terror? It's right above Vraska. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. This thing makes me happy in my Boros tingly parts. <laughs> For a red and a white, it's an uncommon dinosaur. You notice dinosaurs don't have no damn jobs. <sighs> but for for a red and a white, it's a two two flying menace dinosaur. This takes me back to the days of Boros. Like with the the Boros uh, Sky Legionnaire? Is that the one? Mm-hmm. Was that it's just like fl- flying in first strike. It was flying in haste. Flying in haste. Yeah. Flying in haste. Yeah. yeah. So, Sky Knight Legionnaire? Sky, Sky Knight, Knight Legionnaire, there it, it was. Cost, and it costs three. And that's yes. fine. That's, that, that's great. This comes down a turn earlier. And it's harder and to block. It's harder to block, but you lose haste. And it's a dinosaur. It, yeah, it has so it gets like three bonus points type. right there. Yeah. And, also and the really... best part is it's correct. Because it's, you know, it takes on the characteristics of an um, Archaeopteryx. Ah. So yeah, as opposed to a pterosaur. Good call. Because pterosaurs were not dinosaurs, by the way, dear listeners. They were another thing. What was a pterodactyl? That's one it's of the It's the same thing as a pterosaur. Okay. It's a flying yeah. lizard. Okay. Yeah. My childhood lied to me, no. But I also really love that in this art, he's like, check me out. (laughs) (laughs) Wait till they get a load of me. (laughs) Did we cover Vona, the butcher of Megan last week? We did not. Mm. He's also kind of neat. Well, Dirk, you went, "Mm." Mm. 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 Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) So Vona, butcher of Megan. For three, a white and a black, he's a legendary creature. He's a vampire knight who's mythic and is a 4-4. He is vigilance and lifelink. What does he not have? Hey, well, he uh, has he doesn't, tap. He doesn't have flying and menace and dinosaur. That's what he doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Landfall. Rampage. <laughs> Banding. Phasing. <laughs> okay, shut up. <laughs> So, he has tap, pay seven life, Great. destroy target, non-land permanent. Activate this ability only during your turn. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. The hey. fact that he has vigilance, go ahead, attack, and then that second ability basically reads pay three life, because you just gain four. At least, now, if he's holding any equipment. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's, uh, he's pretty neat. Yeah. Like, my brain didn't even see Vigilance. I'm like, wow, so he's kind of worthless for attack and defense if you want to use his... Oh, wait. (laughs) (laughs) And I like the tension here because I feel like if you could just use that ability anytime, it would just feel... It would just feel dumb. It would just be... It would honestly probably be too good because... try Think about trying to play against that. I finally get to play a relevant creature. He's like, okay, well, end of your turn, it's not there anymore. See, Brian, dousing dagger. <laughs> yep. Throw him on there, because he has vigilance. You were talking about, you know, flipping it over, and then you could tap it for mana that turn. Well, he's got yep. vigilance. There you go. And you go. He, he is going to, I think he would be a great one to sort of be the offensive. I'm going to attack you. Oh, you're going to throw somebody the way? Well, I blow it up. All right, my turn. I'm going to attack you. You're going to blow someone? Well, I'm going to blow that up, too. <laughs> 
Well, so because it says activate this ability only during your turn, but it doesn't specify the whole sorcery when, speed thing. Yeah. So you can you attack with, with him, and then before they declare blockers, you can blow up a blocker. Yep, and then he's already attacking. <laughs> well, so. my brain filled in the, you know, sorcery speed, sorcery speed rider, but that's that. there are a lot of things this card doesn't say. Yes. <laughs> in addition to rampage and banding and facing <laughs> and dinosaur. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's cool. Yeah. Hmm. Very nice. Mm hmm Okay. If I, if I ever were to build a Simic deck, then the card right above it would be a great one you to know, add. I was just thinking, I wonder if Dirk saw the Shapers of Nature. What's that do, Oh, Dirk? yeah, I saw them earlier and was like, <laughs> ooh, pretty. <laughs> I feel like Merfolk so far, most of the focus has been on dinosaurs and pirates because they're some of the more... The newer creature types, or the ones that haven't gotten the attention that some of the other vampires and merfolk have. So I feel like a lot of the attention so far has been on the others. But merfolk are here, and they do some interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what do the shapers do, Dirk? So the shapers of nature, for one, a green and a blue, they're a 3-3 three, three merfolk shaman that's, uh, that's uncommon. For three and a green, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Not too bad. For two and a blue, remove a plus one, plus one counter from a creature you control. Draw a card. So you're either making things bigger, or you're making them slightly smaller, but drawing a card. Or doing both. Or Just doing both. Drawing a card. And seven mana isn't, like, super efficient, but if it's repeatable? Yeah, but that's the thing is that the, they're really great sort of in early game because you can build up your guys. But late game, you could be building them up and drawing cards. You could, I mean, when you've got lots of mana that's just sort of sitting there doing nothing, they're a great dumping ground for that mana. Well, and they are going to make combat math so difficult because oh, yeah. if you just attack and you have four mana open, it's like, okay, how do you block? And even with, I mean, that's if you have multiple creatures up because then you can just pump wherever you need to. But if you have nothing else, this comes down as a 3-3 three, three for three. And the next turn you untap, you play a land, and you can make it into a 4-4. Four, four. Mm -hmm. That seems, this is the definition of one of these cards that can just win on its own. And if you need more stuff, you just start drawing cards instead. And with this, there's being so many things, and I haven't looked through the set to see how many things have plus one, plus one counters or whatnot, but again, it would be so incredibly easy to build a deck that has those counters, <laughs> Simic, um, where you can just, you know, put some or take plus one, plus one counters off and have shenanigans happen. They have said that me uh, Merfolk have that theme, plus everything that explores potentially has a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, and I think that's where you're going to find more of the um, plus one, plus one counter effects in these colors you're going to find it on explorer cards yeah rather than cards that just straight up say do something something plus one plus one counter but if you're i mean but there are a couple of other effects that do that as well yes um explore is the big one but you know i think they've seeded enough here that you're going to find it in a couple of places all right chewy what go to green Good snapping green. sail back Snapping. I saw that art earlier, but I didn't read the card. Jurassic Park 3. Yeah, here we go. Snapping Sailback. So for four and a green, it is an uncommon dinosaur. That is a... It's uncommon. I just said that. It's a 4-4 four, four with flash. Huh. And it says, whenever Snapping Sailback is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. <laughs> and then, reminder text, it must survive the damage to get the counter. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, so you don't block a 4-4 four, four with it and then go, oh, look. You know, it got a counter and survived. Er, er. This is yeah. not Hearthstone. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that is awfully confusing sometimes. But I do like that with the art, it matches the flash that he's sort of underwater, biding his time, and then he sort of shows up and he attacks. You no, know, I've been everything. watching that show on Netflix, The Flash. Uh, Sorry, I was like, I don't, I don't get the reference. And the flavor text says that too, lurking beneath the murky waters of Ixalan's rivers. Sailbacks, let me try that again. Sailbacks can rip a meal off the shore in the blink of an eye. Yay. Yeah. Mm hmm So I forget. For an uncommon, that's kind of neat. Yeah. yeah, it is. 
Uh, I forget. Did we mention Savage Stomp at the end of the last episode? I don't no, think, I think we did. I, I made it a point too. Yeah, I think I know that at the end of one of the, my shows, somebody went, "Okay, I don't believe we didn't talk about Savage Stomp." Actually, I you know what? I think week. I think I think we did. I think we did. Yeah, I remember mentioning it. I don't know if Brian had already left at that point. I think Dirk had. Yeah, Dirk had. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. So Savage Stomp is sick, but we talked about that. All right. Uh, <laughs> you know what one of the uh, um, enraged dinosaurs I think is really interesting? I, I, I think there's several, but one of the ones that really stands out to me at Uncommon is the Ranging Raptors. I literally just read that. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, it's a it's for two and a green. It's uh, a two, three, and that three toughness is important. And it's an uncommon dinosaur and has enraged rampant growth. Yeah. Not into your hand. Rampant growth in a dinosaur deck. That feels really important. <laughs> like, really important. Because dinosaurs be big, yo. <laughs> yeah, they do. And the fact that it fixes your mana, I just. Yeah, they're uh, they're pretty good. That's a that's a fun one. And I agree with the whole two three that the the extra toughness is a, a key part in that, but it's just that is is dealt damage. Yes, well that's how enrage works. It's not when they deal damage; it's when they are dealt damage. They're like, "Ow, okay, er, hmm." So, hey Mike, what do you think of sword point diplomacy? Are it red? No, no, it's black. Do do do. Let me black. scroll to it so we can read it again. I like it. This is a card that I would play. This is a card that I would play in an aggressive deck. Okay. What's it do? Since it's one of those Punisher cards where you don't get to decide the effect. So Sword Point Diplomacy, it's kind of like Browbeat. Sword Point Diplomacy for two and a black. It's a rare sorcery. Reveal the top three cards of your library. For each of those cards, put that card into your hand unless any opponent pays three life. Then exile the rest. Wow. Okay. So it's basically uh, a black version of Browbeat. It's a, it's except, a black except Browbeat. The, except the top limit of damage you can get out of it is much higher. Yeah. Now they do get to see what you're getting. Yeah, so that helps them make the call. But, but even like so, like any cards that you don't get, as the old saying goes, might as well have been on the bottom. Might as yeah. well have been on the bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially if there's really good stuff. Or basically a lightning bolt. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, as long as there's really good stuff on top that they desperately don't want you to have, then, hey, free lightning bolts. Sick. (laughs) See, and I think it's really interesting. um, But what I find particularly interesting is if you have any way of either having more than one copy of this or getting it back. Because the first one, they can probably deal with. The second one is going to have the is going to be a much harder decision for them. Yeah. So, hmm. hey Chewy, hey, look at look at Skittering Heartstopper. Skittering, that sounds like a black card. It is a black card. What in the? I killed one of those in my uh, apartment last night. Really? You see the feet behind it? Yeah, that's about the same size. Yeah. So, <laughs> Skittering Heartstopper for a black. Oh, you just wanted me to look at the art, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Okay. I mean. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, a one-two insect for a single black that has pay a black to give it death touch. And it's coming. I mean, I mean it's not going to be shake, shaking the format, but the art is just really creepy. A little bit. Slash mm-hmm. disgusting. Yeah, so last night I uh, was working on a video, which I should probably go make public while we're talking. But uh, I was working on a video and I finally got done uploading and Cap was playing Duck Game on his stream with uh, Joey and Gothic. <laughs> and they were like, dude, you should get in. And I'm like, I'm I'm uploading. I can't. And once the upload finished, I'm like, all right, I'm in. And then we played some Duck Game, and then uh, Cap killed the stream, and we were just sitting here shooting uh, the breeze on Discord. And I look over, and just out of the corner of my eye, I see this big, weird, long, bug black thing on mm. the floor just skittering. And I'm like, ah! And my heart stopped. And then I jumped up and smashed it, except when I smashed it, it didn't die, so I had to smash it again. Oh, so it didn't have death touch. It had indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> it had... Uh, regenerate, at least. It had yeah, regeneration it shield. It had regeneration shield. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I've talked a lot about other cards that I think other people would love, but I haven't actually taken a card in a while. So I'm going to go ahead and take this right now. The Dire Fleet Ravager for three and two black. It's a 4-4 four, four Orc Pirate Wizard. What? And it's a mythic. <laughs> it has menace and death touch, as if it wasn't hard enough to block. And when it enters the battlefield, each player loses a third of his or her life rounded up. Loses a third. That is not something I ever thought I'd see. <laughs> Again. You know what's really sad? I mean, sad? on a dude. That's weird. You know what's really sad is that this will not be in standard with Tris- Tris- uh, Triskaidekaphobia. <laughs> Wait, funny. would that... Hang on. What's a third? It'd be seven. So it'd be 13. Yeah. Huh. Wait, that wouldn't work, though, would it? No, a, th- a third of... Um... A third of 20 is six and some change. So rounded up, that's seven. Yeah, but so Triskaidekaphobia does its plus or minus and then they lose, right? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, so play, but it costs four. So play it first and then next turn, make them go up and then play this guy. And then next turn, make them go down. Wait. Yeah, it doesn't work either. Yeah. Yeah, no. that's a problem. Ah. Then they're at 12. Hey, I can dream. <laughs> I can dream. It makes all these, but you know. Okay, so let's forget that. Okay, this well, guy, wait. So, so if if you make them go down first, they're at nineteen. They're okay. still going to lose seven life down to twelve. And the next turn, you make them go up, and they lose. Okay. Ah, ha, ha, right. there it was. Okay. That's assuming but, that no other damage has been dealt to them. But still, or, and they haven't gained any life. Yeah. Okay. So, but forgetting about the silly enchantment. For five mana, this is a 4-4 four, four orc pirate wizard that takes life from everybody, including you, uh, and has menace and death touch. That's just on its own, just seems silly. Yeah, like, the ability is one thing, but then it's on a 4-4 four, four with menace and death touch. It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> well, all right then. This feels like a bad top deck when you're about to lose. You're like, gee, thanks, but... <laughs> Ah, I only lost one life. <laughs> <laughs> neener, neener. <laughs> but yeah, I do like that he's a crazy, like, uh, what, quarter of a pox or something. What yeah. Is, what is yeah. pox? Pox is a third of life, lands, creatures, cards in hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Buh. Hmm. So, Neat. Okay, there was something in white that I saw, but I don't remember. Well, well we're still in black. I'm going to call out Raider's Wake. Raider's Ooh, Wake. Ooh, yeah. Because it's awesome. What yes, is, it is. What is that? Three and a black. It's an uncommon enchantment. Whenever an opponent discards a card, that player loses two life. You know, we all like Megram effects around here. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, totally... But... Uh, wait. Megram costs three, right? Yeah, Megram yeah. costs three, and okay. Liliana's Crest costs two. But this one has a raid ability. At the beginning of your end step... If you attacked with a creature this turn, target opponent discards a card. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, so it can run itself without any help. Yeah, and... Well, okay, you need to t- to attack with a creature, but... <laughs> but you probably yeah. want to do that anyway, so it's fine. Yes. So you're depleting their resources and hurting them, and it's in a standard with cycling. <laughs> like, everything oh, in common cash. I haven't considered that. That's funny. Oh, wow. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah. So you were talking about white, Chewy? Oh, yeah. That, I remember there being something in white that I want. Oh, yeah. Axis of Mortality. <laughs> That's for, just a silly card. Right. For four mm-hmm. white, white, it's a mythic enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. <laughs> <laughs> it's just every turn. It's a mirror universe. It's like, hey, you want to switch back? Nod nah, says May. I'm good. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is just weird because White has had these effects, but they're usually like one shot. So you don't always see them coming. It's just like, as a sorcery, we're going to go and do this. Oh, by the way, now you're at a low life total die. But the fact that you have to set this up, but that's why it costs six instead of like seven or eight. I can't decide if I like this card or not because my Johnny engine is just going. This whole set, I, this is like, this set is like the exact opposite to me. I think I may have said this, but especially now of um, Hour of Devastation, I feel like there's so much stuff here and there's so many decks I want to build. 
And my first reaction is like, this is cool. But then I'm like, I just don't know how I feel about it. But think about how it feels if the board if the board state is relatively calm when you play this, and you've got creatures and they've got creatures, and then they play this, and then you draw a breakout card, and you can deal them a lot of damage, but you can't finish them. Does this impact mm. your your decision? Knowing that they just they just may go, okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'll have to just i I'll have to just start plinking away until we do get into a situation where the next turn I can do it in one shot. Right. So I feel like this could have a major impact on the game. Which is why it's mythic. Hmm. Burst damage is a thing. Hmm. So there was one more white card that jumped out at me, not because necessarily what it is, but because of what it references. Okay. It's the Legion Conquistador. <laughs> Mike, what are you giggling at? <laughs> I'm giggling at the the flightless hawk. Yeah, Legion Conquistador is a 2-2 vampire soldier that's common for two and a white. And when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Legion Conquistador, reveal them, put them in your hand, and shuffle your library. Does that sound familiar? Yep. Yep. Yeah. There was a creature in Legion. Was it Legion or was it... Um... It was Onslaught. Onslaught, yeah. What? Law- it was the... Uh... The chain, the cavaliers, the Daru cavaliers. Daru cavaliers. That's right. There was a cycle I, of them, one in each color, but that's definitely not what we're talking about. Well, okay. There's wait. Also... Didn't that just get one? Or yeah, just get... got one. Each wasn't, of them only got one. Okay. Wasn't there a green one that got any number? I thought there was a green no. one. No. There was an elf. No, you're one you're that thinking of... for all copies. Yeah, you're thinking of two cards from Mercadian Masks. It was uh, the uh, elf, the worm. elf wait, and the worm. Oh yeah, there's three of them. The elf, the worm, and the hound. Yeah. But yes, I am well aware that Chewie is talking about the birds. Whose name I cannot remember, and apparently Brian Squadron can't either. Squadron Hawks. Squadron Hawks. There we go. And yeah, I was I'm like, the right. Cobblade. I thought you I mean, were just messing around. I, I didn't think you'd actually forget no, that. I really did think Daru Cavalier. I mean, Daru Cavalier changed one into the next, into the next, into the next. Um, it doesn't put them all directly into your hand the first time. Um but that that was kind of the predecessor to Squadron Hawk. So Dirk and I were taking it back. <laughs> yeah, except the nesting worm and the other two were even before that. So eh. oh, that's Mike true. took it even further back. But that's what well, Mike does. Like Mike does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the, the the Legion Conquistador is not going to blow standard wide open. There's not going to be a, a, a Conquistador blade deck. It's conk blade. Yeah. Because it does. <laughs> Have evasion and cost two. Well, no, the real reason is because there's no broken ass swords to hand them and no Jace the yeah. Mind Sculptor to clean up the rest. So. Yes. <laughs> but it's just a neat little, hey, look, let's get these vampires out here. Yeah, it's also funny to me that the vampires are apparently Spanish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they have, a, they have a queen, you know. So. Yeah, they have a queen and a bunch of them reference uh, or are dressed like and reference conquistadors. Yeah. So yeah. it's weird that the vampires are Spanish showing up in the the world here. Hmm. Well, I'm sure that was completely intentional. Yeah. yeah. Just so it so Wizards of the Coast thinks that the Spanish are blood suckers. No, wait, hang on. <laughs> that, don't quote me on that. That was a joke. Anyway. 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 Uh logging into our Twitter right now. <laughs> <laughs> um we got talking when we were talking about Iconic Masters, about um, Mana Drain. Here we've got Spell Swindle. Oh, yeah. For three and two blue. It's an instant. It's rare. Uh, counter target spell. Create X treasure tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. So however much it costs somebody to cast it, you get that many treasure. Seems pretty good. I mean, it, it does cost five. This is not Something you're going to be able to do all the time. But the payoff is pretty huge. And it's unconditional counter. So I don't think it's going to blow standard up or anything like that. Standard, to be in such a shape that this is a really good card, I don't know what that says about standard. But... Hmm. <laughs> means everyone has a reason to wander face first into an opponent who's been saving five mana the past couple turns. <laughs> yeah. 
uh hey check out uh this seems like a mike style card i don't know if that's right or not but hey mike did you see river sneak in blue do to do i think i did yes it's pretty cool yeah so for one and a blue it's a one one merfolk warrior it's uncommon can't be blocked and whenever a merfolk whenever another merfolk enters a battlefield under your control river sneak gets plus one plus one until your turn that's nice. just seems good yeah and the flavor text is awesome no ripples no splashes no warning <laughs> are there anything is there anything that makes uh, merfolk tokens by chance yep um there's um i had just moved away to look at something else but uh we talked about it as beautiful art we are uh deep water deep deep, waters yes oh yeah yeah well, i think just... this Oh, good lord, that's when you cast a... Damn! <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the standard Merfolk creature token is has hexproof. I don't know. If, yeah. Ha, have we seen any other cards that make them? Uh, I don't know. Don't think so. I don't think they would make one with hexproof and one without um, in the same set. Well, they already mm. showed us the tokens, right? Yeah, right. and the token has hexproof. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. So either this is the only thing or there's more to, to come. Mm-hmm. Neat. Hey, Dirk. Mm-hmm. Hey, Dirk. Hey. Look at look at red and look at captivating crew. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> captivating crew for three and a red, a four three human pirate that's rare. For three and a red, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap that creature, it gains haste until in a turn. Activate this ability only anytime you would cast a sorcery. I, this gets my vote for probably the most potentially annoying creature in the set. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a the, repeatable threat. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Dirk. Well, what I was going to say is that the art is reminiscent of Captain Jack Sparrow. And he does have a way of winning people over to their to his side when it's not in their best interest. Mm-hmm. And no, I still haven't seen the fourth movie, so no spoilers. You mean the fifth movie? Yes, I well, I don't want to count on Stranger Tides, but I do mean the fifth movie. So, but uh, it's I mean, it was pretty good. So you said, uh, but I just, I mean, if you don't kill this, how I? It's going to cause some major problems. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice creature you got. Too bad it's going to attack you every turn now. <laughs> neener, neener. <laughs> we sail, we plunder, then we dance. Magic pants. <laughs> wow. Dance, 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 magic pants. I was reading the um, Exploring Ixalan feature about this that goes into more depth about the art. Um, and they purposefully, the way they concepted it, they purposefully gave it gave the art to Winona Nelson because she did the art for a captivating Victor from the core set. You remember oh. the super handsome berserker that could temporarily take control of the creature? No, but mm. I'm about to look it up because that captivating sounds Captivating Victor. Mm-hmm. I think I remember that, yeah. Captivating Vampire? Victor. There is no card called Captivating Victor. Con- Goodness Conquering. Gracious. Conquering Victor. Con- no, that's not what it says. Nope. Something Victor. Something just, just Victor. Victor. Just look up Victor. It'll come up. Hey, Victor, how you doing? What sets it from? It's from a core set. Enthralling Victor. Enthralling Victor. Goodness gracious. Good Lord, he is super handsome. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you see there's a goblin in the corner that's swooning over him. Oh my God, that's so cute. I do remember this car. It's from Origins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in the background of Captivating Crew, there's a there's an orc or something sitting by, like, looking at him. Oh, wistfully. yeah. <laughs> So yes, Good another Lord. super handsome red creature that will <laughs> temporarily take control of your opponent's stuff. Dude, right. throwing Victor's <laughs> getting me all hot and bothered. Let me let me close <laughs> yeah. that. Quick, quick, Chewy, uh, look at makeshift munitions and Make you'll feel better. Makeshift munitions for one and a red is an uncommon enchantment. Pay a mana, sacrifice an artifact or creature. Makeshift mun- mun- blah, 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 blah. makeshift munitions. Why can't I say that? Deals one damage to target creature or player. Oh. Look at the art. The art is one of those weird uh, goblin monkey things stuffing 
the head of a statue in a cannon. Oh, look, there's an, a, a pile of heads in front of it. <laughs> Grease up a fire cannon good and proper with dinosaur liver oil, and it'll shoot just about anything. Yeah, but do it with a redneck accent. Uh, <laughs> That's what he just... <laughs> oh, you could have done that with more redneck. Grease her up. God. <laughs> I think this is cool. And once again, thinking outside the block with, you know, eternal eyes and lots of stuff going to the graveyard, you know, for a single colorless or generic mana, uh, an activating revolt and all sorts of stuff. Because it's an artifact or a creature. There's a lot of synergy here with the last two blocks. And then it's a monkey shooting cement yeah. heads out of a cannon. You can <laughs> shoot treasure at people. You can shoot servos at people. Well, I think that's Vraska's people that Vraska got tired of. It's oh like, my god! Oh wow! That's crazy. That's, that's what the those ceramic heads came from. Is Vraska's crew. I didn't even <laughs> think of that. I was just like, okay, there's statue heads. Wow, that's wow. a lot more morbid now. Thanks. Yeah, it just it just got weird. <laughs> yeah. The captain went over to negotiate a while ago. Where do you think he went? <laughs> Man. Oh. So if you use Raska to turn someone into treasure, you have to use that treasure in the canon. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> it's in the rule book. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did you guys see Rowdy Crew? I just I read think, Rowdy Crew. He, this was spoiled a while ago. I don't think we've actually covered this yet. It's pretty awesome. So. I've never yeah, seen it. Yeah, it's been there a while, but we just never talked about it. Okay, Mike, read, read Rowdy Crew. Rowdy Crew, for two red red, it's a 3-3 three, three human pirate with trample, and it's mythic. And it's mythic because when Rowdy Crew enters the battlefield, draw three cards, then discard two cards at random. If two cards that share a card type are discarded this way, put two plus one plus one counters on Rowdy Crew. Arr. So you play it, it re-rolls your hand, um, and even replaces this stuff, and sometimes it's just randomly a 5-5. Five five. Yeah, with Trample. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's really weird. I think the weird. first time I saw it, I was like, why is it Mythic? And then I read it again, and I said, oh, that's why. Huh can be really aggressive and draws you three cards, even if you then have to discard two still. Yeah. Yeah. But it still ends right. up replacing itself. You still end up with the same number of cards in your hand before and after you play it. Yep. Yeah, that's really neat. You know what card I find really interesting is Trove of Temptation. For three and a red, it's an enchantment. And it's a uh, uncommon. And it's almost like a curse on yourself. Each opponent must attack you or a planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able. So you can force them to attack you, which kind of feels like what? But, you know, they may not want to attack you, so hey. At the beginning of your end step, you get a treasure. So the flavor is, you're uncovering all this treasure, and everybody else is like, yeah, I want some of that. Now, huh. in multiplayer, I would be very careful about this. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm a little sad that you don't get a treasure for each opponent's upkeep or instep, but... Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. That'd be a way of scaling the reward with the risk. Mm-hmm. But, in any case. Hmm. I wonder if they tested that. Maybe. What do you guys think of Wily Goblin? Because I've heard a lot of people divide on this. Some people say this is really good, and some people say this is absolute trash. I mean, it costs double red. It depends on how much you really want the treasure. Uh, it is treasure. Hmm. It is. So for red red, it's a 1-1 one, one goblin pirate that's uncommon. And when it enters the battlefield, you get a treasure. Boom. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all right, I guess. It's okay. I mean... There's not a lot of goblin synergy right now. But... No. I mean, there's about to be some pirate synergy. Yeah, there's a pretty true. good amount of pirate synergy. Like the Lightning Rig crew, which I just happened to scroll up to. That's great. Wow. For two and a red, it's a 0-5 goblin pirate. That's uncommon. And you tap it to deal one damage to each opponent, which I did not see until right now. And whenever you cast a pirate spell, you untap it. Yeah. <laughs> Yar. I wish I had cannons that shot 
uh, lightning bolts and cannons that shot statue heads. <laughs> well, you need to ask these monkey pirate guys. <laughs> Maybe they can build you something. <clears throat> so, have you? Have, did you guys last week while I was gone? Did you talk about the Talani Till on Ali's skin shifter? Don't I don't think, think we so. did. I don't think so. And that's been there since the beginning, I think. But yeah, you just got a lot of stuff to talk about. Yeah, so. what's that do, Dirk? Because it's really cool. So for two and a red, it's a human shaman that's a zero one. Yeah, that's you know, zero one. That's le- uh, that's rare. It has haste. Hell All yeah, right. zero you one so with mad. haste. <laughs> yes. <laughs> for three, are you kidding? That's broken. Bargain. <laughs> anyway, so when it attacks. It takes, it becomes a copy of another target non-legendary attacking creature until end of turn. Yeah, so you know, your your best creature that you have, now you have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a weird one. As long as you have something else worth attacking with, it seems pretty good. Mm Mm-hmm. And there's there's ones that I think that could fall into, again, with lots of the big dinosaurs. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, pretty much any dinosaurs. <laughs> it's going to be a good choice. So here's a nice simple one that just flipping through uh, some of the dinosaurs, it's crazy. It's called Ryle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For a single red, it's a sorcery. It's common. It deals one damage to target creature you control. That creature gains trample until end of turn. Draw a card. And like so the, you're riling the, up the dinosaur. Yeah, so you're... So for you're, a red... You're you're drawing a card and you're giving something trample and you're by the way you're probably picking something with enrage, probably. Yeah, like the very Hopefully. first one that came to mind is the the basic simple one, the Sun Crown Hunters. It's a five yeah. four, and so you ping it, you give it trample, it deals three damage to your opponent, and then you swing with a essentially a five three well, with trample. And then and then you draw a card. And then you draw a card, like, and you don't have to swing yeah. with it. That's the best part. And but both... then if they but then if they block it, you're gonna throw another. You're gonna throw another damage. lightning bolt at them. <laughs> and you know what? Both of those cards are common. Yeah, I think Ryle is gonna be one of those that at some point at the pre-release, you're gonna lose a game because they had a Ryle, and you're gonna be like, because <laughs> it's such a stupid card, and it's gonna kill you. <laughs> Ryle is definitely a card where. If you don't read it right, you're going to be like, okay, I have a couple lands and a Ryle and like a three or four cost creature in my hand. I'm good. And then you're going to like draw and be like, I can't do anything with this for a long time. Yeah. So. Well, um, I mean, there's lots of other stuff here, but do we want to go ahead and call it? I feel yeah, like I'm, I'm running out of things that are neat enough to talk about. Yeah. I mean, lots of decent stuff. Yeah. Uh, real quick, real quick. In the lands, Field of Ruin. Oh, dude, yeah, I meant to bring that up Ooh. first, and then you said Vraska, and I was like, right, do that instead. What's Field of Ruin? Because it's really neat. It's an uncommon land. You can tap it to add a colorless mana to your mana pool, or you can pay two and tap and sack it to destroy target non-basic land and opponent controls. So it's a bit of a wasteland effect. Now, each Player, not opponent. Player searches his or her library for a basic land card, puts it onto the battlefield, and shuffles his or her library. So it's a rampant growth for everybody. So, but it comes in untapped. It comes in untapped. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's basically a ghost quarter that also replaces itself. It replaces itself. So yes, you're blowing up their thing. Yes, you are replacing it. Okay, Dirk, I blow up your land. That's non-basic so it's probably one you wanted a lot more than like a planes why don't you go get a planes but i'll also get something for myself so it doesn't set me back on land and when you're blowing up any of the like flip lands you're gonna feel pretty good about this Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's pretty good i like that uh where uh, did uh, I agree. No, okay, I was thinking that somehow there was some sort of reprint of um, the opponents only search the top three cards of their library creature, oh. but that was um, that was reprinted somewhere else. I was thinking of the Sunwing, but that's uh, that's a 
kind of sort of kismet thing. So glad I didn't say any of that because I would have been foolish. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. Yeah. All right, then. So should be. Oh, wait, there's one more. There's always okay. one more. The, Maybe you were also thinking of the Tukatli Honor Guard that stops and the battlefield traders. That's the one that I just saw. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Various different types of hate birds. Yep, but no, but not a, uh, not a stopping them from searching. Not a mind sensor. Yeah. Yeah. Good. The Tukatli Probably Honor the Guard. Oh, the mind sensor was in. Uh, it's in one of the Amonkhet sets. Yeah, it was an hour, I think. So what's the last one, Chewie? The Tukatli Honor Guard for one and a white okay. is a one-three human soldier that's rare. And it says, creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Ooh. Yeah, there are not a Zern orb. A, uh, um, <clears throat> Definitely not a Zern orb. What's the orb? Because this, um, this has already been a thing, because I had a deck built around it, using this and, like, Sky Swallowers and such. It was in New Phyrexia. Gosh, I don't remember. Uh, there was an orb that did this, and look, now it's on a creature. So I can see the art in my head. Well, it was on a creature before. It was on a bird. That came out a corset or a griffin or something that was in a corset. Okay. Right. Well, yes, this is awesome. Let's not get bogged down with details. Just for that, I'm getting bogged down with details. It is Torpor Orb. Torpor Orb, yeah. 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 And also the Hushwing Griff. But this is now a uh, a two mana version, so. Ooh. I mean, the Torpor Orb costs two, but. Hey, hey, Dirk. Mm-hmm. How tired are you? Do you need to go like right now? Uh, yeah, as long as we wrap up soon, I should be fine. Then go ahead. I posted a link in the notes to today's Daily Magic update. Look at Fleet Swallower. It's the first one under. Oh today's yeah. <laughs> go ahead and read Fleet Swallower. It's under. Do you see the link? For... Okay, I see Fleet Swallower. Okay. So Fleet Swallower for five and. Two blue. It's a six-six fish. That's why, rare. Why they didn't just go ahead and make it a leviathan? I'm not sure, but six-six fish. fish. Okay. So whenever fleet swallower attacks, target player puts the top half of his or her library rounded up into his or her graveyard. Mike, just because it says player, <sighs> does not mean you do it <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> You are not my boss. <laughs> but I like how this doesn't have to even connect. Now, yes, it costs seven, but it doesn't have to even connect. <laughs> Screw you, like... Ulamog. <laughs> but what do you think of that, Dirk? Well, I still don't want to be on the receiving end of it. <laughs> no. Although if you're playing against Mike, you might be okay. <laughs> I mean, you're still going to take six, but, you know. I just love the flavor text. Captain, I think that island is following us. <laughs> I think at that point, the captain probably knows. He's like, uh, hey, Mike, what do you think of repeating barrage? <laughs> I think it's great. I love I love hammer variants. So for one red red, it's a rare sorcery. It deals three damage to target creature or player. And it has a raid ability. You can pay three red red and return Repeating Barrage from your graveyard to your hand. Activate this ability only if you attacked with a creature this turn. Seems good. Yeah. So if you have a truly ridiculous amount of mana lying around, you can attack with something, cast it, return it, and cast it again. Yeah. I mean, that's only, what, 11 mana? Oh, yeah. It's easy. Yeah, no problem. Because you've totally got, like, two of the Lost Veils flipped, right? Oh, yeah. Because I've been attacking with creatures this whole time. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Duh. <laughs> seems pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and talk uh, real quick about Perilous Voyage because of what it represents. Perilous Voyage for one and a blue is an instant uncommon. Return target non-land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. If its converted mana cost was two or less, scry two. So basically if you're bouncing something bigger that's great you'd probably get more value out of it but then you don't get to scry and scry 2 is pretty big the important part about this is that it is story spotlight card number five. Oh, hey look at that 
and it shows Vraska reaching for Jace, who looks like he's going down a waterfall. Poor Jace. Jace is having a rough time. He really is. Right? Even Clues has got to start feeling sorry for Jace at this <laughs> and, point. And the flavor text says, for the first time in her life, Vraska tried to prevent death. But from the art, it looks like she's not going to get there in time because he's a long way down. So Yeah. So apparently she felt sorry for him or something and maybe his memory is still lost. I don't know if he got it back, but at the end of last week's story, um, it was interesting. When it was just Jace wandering around, you know, spoiler alert, if you haven't already read it, um, when Jace showed up on Ixalan, he lost his memory again. He couldn't remember who he was or what he could do. Eventually he found out that he could use magic and create illusions, which didn't help him, you know, when he actually needed like real fire and See, shelter. He um, created an illusionary fire and he tried to cook a fish in it and uh, it didn't work. Are you serious? I'm yeah. serious. Oh my God. <laughs> because at first he didn't realize it was, it was an illusion. He just like really wanted a fire and suddenly a fire appeared. He's like, yes, I'm a mage. And he tried to cook a fish and he's like, <laughs> this is <some> crap. <laughs> I'm a stupid. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. And then at the end of that story, He's just sitting there, you know, bummed out on an even crappier island that he ended up on after leaving the first one he landed on. And he's he lost just, his Wilson and, you know. Yeah. And suddenly Vraska's ship shows up and she notices him and she's basically like, oh, my God, look who it is. I guess I'll come over and say hello before I murder you. But when she sees him, she's like, holy crap, you look rough, man. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, Jace, what the hell happened to you? Mm hmm. And I think it's interesting that they talked in, I think, the story podcast about Vraska, because we really haven't seen a whole lot of Vraska. She shows up in one story in Return to Ravnica after he becomes the Guild Pack, basically mm -hmm. to kill him because she's a bit of an anarchist or she has her own designs or whatever. You don't really know. She shows up in one additional story um, that wasn't connected to any set going on where she's trying to do something to gain control of the um, Golgari. Mm -hmm. So we hadn't seen a whole lot. And then when they're doing the podcast, they're saying they're giving a little more insight into her character. And they said, they really explained how she's really someone that due to her background, feels like she connects with the underdog. She connects with people that feel like they don't have anything. And she comes yeah. upon Jace, who is the embodiment of the guild pact, although he's not doing his job ever. He's making a planeswalker to the guild pact, FYI, terrible idea because they're never on, on Ravnica. But anyway, she comes across mm -hmm. him. He's a figure of the authority that she hates, which is why she tried to kill him. But then she sees that he's in rough shape. He's waterlogged. He's lost his memory. My guess is you, you look at the picture on the new Jace card. He's clearly a pirate. She basically just says, I'm going to take you and raise you up and get you all big and strong, hit you back on your feet again, because she, she, he has become mm -hmm. another one of the, the lost ones thing. She's Peter Pan and he's a lost boy now. And she's turning into a pirate. Ooh, <laughs> take that hook. So she needs mm -hmm. to dress him up like a raccoon or something, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right. That'll be the next, um, San Diego comic-con promo. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's why she hasn't like deaded him yet. Because she feels like he's not really the one that he was before. Yeah, you're right. Before, they were really only enemies because on Ravnica, Jace was the personification of the man that always kept her down. Yeah. And I think had she come across him and he wasn't clearly in such a rough spot, she would have killed him on the spot. Yeah. But this is one of these times where I feel like the podcast gave us a lot more flavor than we had seen in the story. And I don't know how I feel about that because I don't feel like it came out naturally. Uh, it felt kind of like, oh, by the way, this is a, something about her that's going to be super important. Um, and we're just telling it to you instead of letting it come out through the story. But Well, granted, without reading the other supplementary stories, you wouldn't even know that um, she had a problem with Jason was trying to kill him before. Anyway. Also, also true. And again, she's shown up in literally two story art. Mm -hmm. So I, I get that. And it's quite possibly that they're simply cutting to the summary of something that would, over the next couple articles, we'll see, oh, that's how she is. I just thought it was interesting that they went ahead and said that so that you don't even have to worry about, wait, why is she keeping him alive? It's, this is why she's keeping him alive. Well, let's go ahead and 
get Dirk to bed. I mean, um, nothing. <laughs> I think we're we're good, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think so. we're good. I mean, we awesome. said we were good, and then we did like four more cards, so now we're definitely good, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but there's this one. One more. Card. Oh, I'm totally joking. <laughs> <laughs> one more game, right? Oh, one, more game. one more game. Because <laughs> we have fond memories of one more game, don't we? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it happened again after you left uh, that Saturday. Oh, let's just play one more game. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Every oh, half an hour, I was like, I'm going to have to kick you guys out soon. <laughs> but I really don't want to because I want the game to yeah. end. Yeah, it was one of those games that we felt trapped in. <laughs> well, I, I mean, we had all invested in it. But literally, Chewy won the turn that I was going to say, you guys need to go because it's 11 o'clock. <laughs> and then Chewy's like, I can win. I'm like, Okay, let's let's watch this play out. Titanic ultimatum, baby. <laughs> yes. The card is stupid. <laughs> I was like, all right, all right, all right. This didn't get recorded or anything, so this isn't a spoiler or anything. I was like, all right, you guys. All these creatures survived. I'm going to tap all this mana. <laughs> I'm going to turn this land into a creature. I'm going to tap all this mana, and I'm going to cast this. Do I win? And we I added even, up I, I all think my I damage. And we added up all of their lives and all of their... Uh, creatures toughnesses and we were like you win if you yep. can divide it up properly I'm like, hang on hang on hang on <laughs> he, even, he even said how much mana he was adding to his mana pool and i said titanic ultimatum and he was like you are correct <laughs> <laughs> because as awesome as that card is hadn't actually seen it being played in a little while so i was like yeah it was it was pretty good i had a that man land the red green one that whenever it attacks it gets plus one plus one uh-huh. Yeah, that had never been activated the entire game, just sitting there. I had all the men in the known universe. It was ridiculous. It's because Dar- Mike and I were busy, like, trying to kill each other. Yeah, there were several game- points when I could have just up and murdered one of them, and thereby handing the game to the other person. Yeah, then you just would have lost right back. Yeah. yeah. So, and I think both of you were in the same boat. Like, yeah, at any yeah. point, e- any of us could have killed one other person, and the other person would have won. And then I was the, I was trying. I really <laughs> thought the villainous wealth for ten was going to get me somewhere, but <laughs> no. Yeah, it did not. Anyway, so final thoughts, then, gentlemen. Uh, well, for me, I am. I've decided that I wanted to put some of my posters up, so <laughs> I've been adding a little bit of art to the room. Part of what was going on tonight is I was also purchasing. Um, some bookshelf pegs because we have unloaded a great deal of stuff at the new house, but we still have some boxes of stuff. And one of the things I really want to get unboxed are the kids' books because they have been doing such a great job of, we, we've been, every night we try to read a book and unfortunately all their books are, you know, still in boxes. So I've been trying to, I've been looking around trying to find pegs so I can unload their uh, books onto the bookshelf. But the bookshelf doesn't have pegs for the shelves and so on and so forth. So that's why I'm that's one of the big projects I've been sort of working on. Nice. And I'm taking tomorrow off of work so that I can get my driver's license updated. Ah. Because I got called to jury duty. Oh. In County. Ooh. So I, I sent them, I faxed them a thing that, you know, like, I'm a high school teacher. I don't live in Granville County anymore. That, that's the big thing is that you don't live there anymore. I mean, technically, yeah. the, even the fact that you're a teacher, you'd still have to report and try and get excused. But if you don't live there anymore, that's the thing. So Well, that's the, I'm, I'm going in to get my driver's license updated and everything so that, it, that I've, I haven't, they haven't called or anything of that sort. And it's after the date where they were like, you need to have, you need to have sent us in something by this date. You know, we needed a contact number and I haven't heard anything. So. Well, then uh, one of two things is, is happening. You're either good or there's an order for your arrest and you'll be picked up in front of your family and friends. Uh, and, yay. And, and, and you're, well, and you're the only downside to that is that that means they'd have to come all the way out here to come get me. <laughs> <laughs> At which point I'm pretty yeah. sure that would, Put, that would sh- point out the issue of I don't live there anymore. You're, you're you should be fine, Dirk. <laughs> so, but I I did fax over that information. I just, but I, like I said, my big thing is I need to go get that done so that if there is a question, it's like no, my 
driver's license says I'm here now. Yeah. To make it official. Nice. And so. by all means, you should get your driver's license updated as soon as possible anyway. Trust me, it'll bite you in the ass if you don't. You remember well, my orange PT Cruiser? Uh-huh. You remember my orange PT Cruiser got run the hell over when Mom and I were on the way to the movie theater to see the uh, the first Fantastic Four movie? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You remember I got a ticket for that because my yep. driver's license didn't have the right address? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that part. Yeah, I got run over because improper turn on their part, and blam! Oh Jesus! And mom hit the, uh, mom and I hit the uh, airbags, and everything was terrible. And okay, the car is damaged enough to not drive. Damn it! So we called Aunt Beth. Hey, can you come get us? Yeah. Hey, can you come get us in like two hours? We're gonna go see this movie while we're in town. <laughs> because <laughs> it happened right next to the theater, and yeah, the cop ended up giving me a ticket because the driver's license wasn't right. Mm-hmm. I was like, boo. My, my issue has just been that, so I moved the first weekend of August. I started work on Monday. Yeah, you did. And I have not, and the, the days I'm off are the days the DMV's closed. Mm-hmm. Like, they're not open on the weekends, and the only holiday, I've only day off I've had during the week was Labor Day. <laughs> and hey, they were closed. So And they were closed. <laughs> So I have literally not been able to because uh, my work is from 8 until 4. So by the time I get off work, there there's no way I can sit in the DMV, get to the DMV, get all this stuff taken care of, and be able to pick up my kids. So yep. that has been my issue of why I have not been able to go. So it's, it's that I specifically took tomorrow off so that I could get this done. I have an appointment for that very reason. <laughs> Nice. So I hope I will not be sitting in the DMV for two hours waiting to get my stuff updated. Eh, depends on which one you go to. I'm going to Thomasville. I have no idea how that one is, so good luck. Okay. All right. Well, I'm off, gents. All right. The the, the last link in the show notes there is or in the show notes in the chat is for you, Dirk. By the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Well then, Bye, have guys. a good night. <laughs> So how about the rest of yous? I'm doing just peach. Um, yeah, I could have sworn I had something to talk about during Final Thoughts, and I probably just went in and talked about everything both during the show and during Odds and Ends. Um, yay, life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hooray! Set looks awesome. It does look like it'll be a lot of fun. And even, like, the... the- common and uncommon bits of nonsense that we haven't <laughs> talked about. Uh, there, while the cards individually might not be, you know, worth bringing up and spending more than a second on, they're, they're really neat. They tie, they, a bunch of them tie in together uh, mm-hmm. in ways that just make sense. And yeah. it looks like it'll be a fun limited format. So, yeah. So, is that it for you then, Brian? Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything more, more spiritual or, or ecumenical or something, but I grammatical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Julian fries. I don't know. It Ooh, just feels like, you know, not, not, life isn't perfect. Um, but I feel like everything's more or less going. Okay. So yeah, you guys. I mean, I might. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Um, also doing pretty well. Uh, I think when I look at the art of Perilous Voyage and I look in the background, like near the top of it, pretty sure that's, uh, that's part of the wall of the golden city of Arazka. Cause we saw in the, um, the story spotlight number four, the thematic compass that flips over and turns into the spires of Arazka mm-hmm. that they did actually find the city in this part of the story. So I guess the, Perilous Voyage, that's the cliffhanger at the end of this episode. <laughs> literally. Lit- well, yes. Except literally. he's not really hanging. Well, Vraska is. So. Yeah, okay, there we go. It's more like a cliff dive. <laughs> a cliff diver. <laughs> yes. Until the next block. <laughs> like, I'm going to bungee jump, and she's like, Jace, no, you're not connected to the... Uh. <laughs> he's like, what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Sorry. 
sorry, I can't hear you over the sound of this sick bungee jump. <laughs> you mean the sick jump? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, I guess that just leaves me then. Mm-hmm. And I have nothing. I haven't had a, uh, well, before today, I hadn't had a call for a drive in a week, which was simultaneously awesome because I got a lot of stuff done. <laughs> but also not awesome because, you know, that's my other source of income. So, yeah. Yeah. There's always that, you know, plus and minus. But, like, in the time since I haven't had a drive, I have been working my ass off. Before, when I started, when I woke up this morning, I had already put in, like, 35 hours on the week. On Wednesday. And that's with yesterday realizing that I was going to die, and I stopped doing stuff for, like, five hours. And just went and ate food and accidentally dozed off, and then stared at things for... <laughs> Like, three hours. And then I came back and got back to work. <laughs> but, like, Cap, uh, Stephen Rogers from the Lair of Lore, was like, dude, you're gonna die. You need to, like, go sit down and not work. And I'm like, no? And then I, and then I did anyway. Because, you know, no dying is the first rule. So, I'd be kind of a hypocrite if I didn't follow my own rule, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. For those of you that are patrons, that are at the odds and ends tier or above, then... You should totally uh, be enjoying that, because I have put up a lot of odds and ends lately. Again, odds and ends for episodes will be going up within a week of the show actually going up, because otherwise, wh why be there? Why be there? Because I've learned uh, about <coughs> myself that if I make something part of my routine, I'll do it. Yeah. Like, I'm at 114 or so uh brawling with buddies videos there's one every week because there's a tavern brawl every week and i haven't missed one yet because i have to do it because it's part of the routine so i've decided to just make odds and ends part of the routine which i should have done originally which i meant to originally but things were different when i started the odds and ends uh, in life so things are better now so yeah and since every night i tend to play some hearthstone or some heroes of the storm or something before i go to bed i just get an odds and ends put together and then listen to it at one and a half speed and take notes while I'm playing Hearthstone and Heroes of the Storm. And now I kill two birds with one stone and I play through my daily quests and I get an odds and ends done. Sick. Mm, bird. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, uh, I think for the uh, names on the insulate patron tier, Patreon <laughs> hiccups. <sighs> so for the names on the insulate uh, $20 Patreon tier, I think starting with next month, I'm actually going to put those at the end of the mana pool as well. Hmm. Just at the beginning of each month, record uh, a thank you and append that to the end of each episode. So that way it's not just get your name on YouTube videos. It's get your name on YouTube videos and on the podcast, which I'm sure uh, some of you. Well, I know that a bunch of you listen to the podcast and don't fool with YouTube because otherwise I'd have a lot more views on YouTube. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's, that seems like a, a, another nice little incentive thing that I totally didn't steal from Alex Shaw. I did. I totally stole it. Speaking of Alex Shaw, myself and Dylan clues were on an episode of school of movies, uh, that was recorded last weekend that went up for his patrons already and will be going public. I don't know when sometime very soon. Sometime, hopefully very soon. Cause I'm looking forward to it. Really? Wow. Well, yeah. I mean, it's tearing me apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We recorded with school of movies myself. Like I said, it was me and Dylan clues. And then Alex and Sharon from school of movies. We recorded on the room. We were on that call for four and a half hours because the room is a bad movie. But when oh. you look at the history, like the story behind the bad movie, it turns into a fascinating movie. Uh, to the point where they've convinced me to pick up a copy of uh, Disaster Artist and read it before the movie comes out. Because yes, there's a movie coming out called The Disaster Artist that is based on the book that is about the making of The Room. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's going to be like the movie Ed Wood uh, about the making of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Right. And it's got James Franco as Tommy Wiseau, the main character. 
and his brother really yeah and his brother uh dave franco as uh greg sestero the the guy who wrote the book and also the co-star and line producer of uh the room uh. and the story behind it dude it gets weird like the more that uh, the, he sent us a bunch of excerpts for us to read uh throughout the the, the episode you know mm. and the more of those that we read the weirder it got it's like I really, really? I really want to, I really want to catch this. So definitely, uh, I'll be looking for it. So yeah, if if uh, you enjoy films that are so bad they're good, then one, you've probably already seen the room, and two, you get to hear me and Bill and Clues rant and rave with Alex and Sharon Shaw about it. And it was a lot of fun, dude. For four and a half hours, we were on this call. Not once did I like get bored or start to uh, zone out or anything. Not once. And I've zoned out like three times on this episode and we've only been going for two hours. So <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm no Tommy Wiseau, which usually is a point of pride, but right now I'm a... it's uh Oh, and, and Hey, Hey Brian, have you seen the room? I don't think I've ever seen it. Just sat down and watched it. Uh, I read the reviews. I saw the nostalgia critic review of it and uh, one or two other just like, Highlights. Of, I think at one point, um, did they do an everything wrong with the room? <laughs> that would have been really entertaining. Oh yeah, because it ended up in like the billions, I think. Yeah. So um, yes, because they did a they did a bonus round of uh, I think him just like laughing nervously, or every time they stopped to like play soccer or, or yeah. football or something. Yeah, every time someone so. threw a football, every time he did his giggle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I just watched the yeah. Everything Wrong with uh, Sentences did not long ago. I don't think I've ever actually sat down and just watched it. I don't think. I think my brain would probably just explode. But I, I think I've I have <laughs> seen enough of it uh, that I get the madness. Uh, so. Well, anytime that you uh, have the urge and you find yourself at home with nothing to do and no Sam, you should totally call me. I will. I have it on DVD now because I was doing the stupid show with the Shaws. So I own this crap now. So if you ever want to watch it, let me know. We will make this happen. It's not on Netflix. It is not streaming <laughs> anywhere. I, I didn't think so. Otherwise I wouldn't have bought the stupid DVD. Didn't it used to be on YouTube or something? Uh, not the way. I mean, it, it might be in the past, but I couldn't find it anywhere. Well, if I find myself with nothing to do ever <laughs> of any value, I'll let you know. But wow. I, again, I am very much looking forward to the school movies. So, yay. Nice. So that's, uh, that's that on YouTube. Gentlemen, um, gentlemen I'm going to go and head out. I right, will have a good night, guys sir. later. You too. And hopefully, Chewie, I'll see you in a little while. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Maybe. Next weekend. <laughs> bye bye. Oh boy. So over on YouTube, uh, Mike and I recorded a uh, another episode of TMP Nerf Report for the upcoming Hearthstone balance changes that is proving to be a doozy, but I'm getting it all edited down. It'll be up. The patch is due to go live on the 18th, so sometime before that, it'll be up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm hoping that people who watch it and... Um... Don't like uh, well okay so there's several of our uh, points that we ended up making that of course everyone else who's already posted a video before us um, has made as well but you know including in videos that got posted after we sat down and recorded that like i purposefully did not watch any videos that youtube tried to suggest to me about other people's commentary on the stuff because i didn't want to accidentally repeat things yeah. that I had heard that weren't my own actual thoughts. But there's, uh, I did watch some later, and I'm like, you know, especially watching Kibler's video, I'm like, oh, Chewie and I said that. Oh, Chewie and I said that too. Oh, we said that too. Yeah, I watched like two of Kibler's afterwards. Mm-hmm. One that he recorded before the nurse were announced, but he didn't post mm-hmm. till after the nurse were announced. Yeah. And then one that was a follow-up to that after we got done recording ours, and I was like, damn it, Kibler. But I guess that means we we there are some obvious good points to be made. Yeah. Rather than just, oh, you know, like Hearthstone players do. Right. So, no, we didn't rip off Kibler's video. We just yeah, ended or, up with a lot of similar conclusions. Because I guess else. we have a lot of similar insights. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've all been playing Magic for far too long. So, 
Meaning yeah. by we all, I mean you and me and Kibler. So. Mm-mm. And we've all been playing Hearthstone since mostly the beginning. Yeah, since time immemorial. <laughs> but anyway, see, so that'll be going up soon. Um, I finally put up the final Left for Dead video that was recorded way back in January that uh, me and Bill and Scott and Squanto did. So hopefully I'll be getting some of them together again soon so we can record more zombie murdering madness. Man, that last episode was intense, too. I had forgotten just how nuts that was. <laughs> like, I was editing it, you know, watching mm-hmm. it through, and, and just getting tense. Even though I knew the outcome, because I'd been there, I'd done it, and I didn't have any more past it. So, like, I knew what the outcome was, but uh, <laughs> I was still tense, like, No! Look out! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was that was good. That was real good. Good. Uh... I'm still working on editing up the Knights of the Frozen Throne solo missions from Hearthstone. And there's something... Well, I haven't... I've been focusing less on YouTube here lately. Oh, I finished the park. No, I didn't. The last one is yet to go up. Never mind. Uh, I've got one more episode of the park to go up, but the next to last one went up. Yeah. Uh... Oh, and look, my Sindragosa video is marked not suitable for all advertisers. <sighs> but the park, which was marked not suitable for all advertisers, isn't anymore. I really don't understand. Like, last week's Brawling with Buddies was marked as not suitable for all advertisers. And then it, once everybody watched it, they took that away. So now it's got all the ads. But now no one's going to watch it anymore. So thanks, YouTube. You yeah. I swear, I don't understand. Like, if I was at the point where I was making money from YouTube, which I'm really not, you know, I've gotten paid, I think, twice total. But still, if if I was at the point where I was making money from it, this would be hurting. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So on that note, uh, let's translate. It's, it's YouTube.com slash The Manipool, by the way. Feel free to watch stuff and turn off ad block, please. Because it's the only way that us YouTubers make money off of YouTube without sponsored deals and whatnot. And I'm is not it, big enough it, for that. Is it just slash to mana pool or do you have to do slash C slash to mana pool? Uh, both work. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I don't know when they made it to where you could just YouTube.com slash whatever. But that works now. So, whatever. Uh, but on that end, uh, over on Twitch, I've been trying to stream a little bit more. I, I wasn't up to it last night. But... Uh, my next big project on Twitch is actually going to ple- be to stream West of Loathing. I've decided not to do it on YouTube. I'm going to do it on Twitch so I get the live interaction with, with the viewers. So that's the next big project. In addition to the Hearthstone and other stuff that I already stream. So yeah, hell yeah. That'll be fun. Because that game ain't right. <laughs> and that's twitch.tv slash the Manipool. And for the month of September... If you have not subscribed before, excuse me, a first-time subscription to a channel is half off. So, hey, if you want to throw a subscription my way, it's only like 250 Pretty sick for the first month. And also, if you watch anybody on Twitch and you feel the urge, especially me, and you feel the urge to cheer some bits for them, please, 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 for the next however many days, use hashtag charity. Because Twitch is doing a thing where for every some number of bits donated, uh, for every some number of bits cheered anywhere on Twitch during that time period, which is until the 19th. So by the time you're listening to this, if it went public, you've got one more day. Sorry about that. But uh, if you use hashtag charity, then your bits will count towards the total and they're giving uh, money up to $200,000 to Extra Life. And the last time I looked, it was only at like 75000 so by all means, come hang out, check out the stream, throw some bits at me, use hashtag charity. And if I'm not streaming, then damn it, cheer for somebody and use hashtag charity because Extra Life is awesome. And goodness knows, you know, Twitch is trying to give money away. So let them give money away. Unlike YouTube, who's trying to keep all their money because they're dicks. So <laughs> Yay. But anyway, that's that's that. I'm going to shut up now. So all the usual stuff applies. The Twitter and Facebook is all the mana pool. 
and themanapool.com is where you'll find the podcasts, and dorks at themanapool.com is our email address, and patreon.com slash themanapool is where you'll get all the cool stuff. You can get Manipool episodes and YouTube videos early. You can get the odds and ends, all the stuff recorded before and after both podcasts, this one and Monday Night Magic, uh, within a week of the episode going up. And you can get all of that and your name on the end slate for all of the videos that go up in any given month that you uh, support at that tier. And starting next month, you'll also get your name read off on the uh, end slate, on the end slate at the end of all of the Manipool podcasts, possibly Monday Night Magic too. I haven't decided that it, uh, yet. Probably both though. So yay, incentives. So with that, we'll be gone now. So this has been the Manipool number... I forgot already. 479, is that right? Uh, sounds familiar. <laughs> yes, 479. See, I had to look it up that fourth time. Damn it. <laughs> so thank you all so very much for listening. And uh, go play some magic. <laughs>